Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is non-overlapping intervals. Given a collection of intervals, find the minimum number that you would need to remove to make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. When we say overlapping, basically we just mean the start or the end point are not within another interval's range. You can see with this example, one, two, two, three, three, four, one and three can be removed, which would make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. A couple things to note is, is are the borders are touching, that doesn't count as, as an overlap. And we can always assume the interval's endpoint is always bigger than its start point. So there won't be any tricky, um, you know, mixed up start and end points. So usually with these kind of questions, uh, you could first approach it recursively. You could think maybe we can find every possible combination. Uh, we can have all four, we can pop off one, we can pop off two, three, or four, we can pop off these two, and just every possible combination, and just check to see which one is the minimum length, or I should rather say maximum length, uh, where it's going to be non-overlapping. But that is going to be very expensive, and frankly, if you just have like a length of 10 intervals, you can imagine there's so many combinations, it just becomes um, unrealistic to do that. So usually with interval problems, there's either a dynamic programming solution or a greedy method. And here, there's going to be a greedy method. Now, initially, you might think uh, what we might want to do is sort this list of intervals. And then we can just go through it and to see um, how many overlap. And as soon as we find one that overlaps, we could increase our counter to, say, one. And that would give us the number of intervals that we would need to pop off. So, for instance, if we had this example here, we can sort it, this would be put into here, and we can just check from the beginning, hey, this uh, is three, or I should say rather the start point, uh, less than the max endpoint from the from the previous, and if it is, we know that we need to pop this one off, and just continue on, and just count up the numbers that we need to do that for. So that would be kind of the first thought I would have, so we can think, for, well, first we'll say if not intervals, if we're given an empty list, just return zero. Next we can sort the intervals, and we'll set up two variables, max end, as well as the output. Max end is going to be a float of negative inf, the lowest possible number in Python, so that's just going to be negative inf, as well as output zero, which is going to be counting up the number of intervals that we need to pop off. So for start and end in intervals, which have been sorted now, we could say if the start is less than and uh, hmm, well, I, maybe we can flip it. We can say the start is greater or equal to the max end, then we will just update our max end to this one end. Otherwise, we'll increase our counter, plus equal one. And finally, return the output. So I want to go into this more deep dive because it's very interesting, but um, I just don't have the time today. So uh, let's imagine that we have this example. Oops. Let's just see what happens here. So you can see this works, and I would submit this, but I already know it's not going to work because there is a problem here. What if we had something like 110 and 45? Like in, with our algorithm, what it would do is first use this 10 as our maximum end, and then it would say, oh, okay, well, you need to pop this one off, pop this one off, pop this one off to get it all non-overlapping. But we can see clearly here that it'd be better to just pop off the first one. Right, so this would fail if we ran this algorithm. Uh, it would return three, but the expected answer should be one. So this really threw me for a loop for a while. Um, but eventually when I started researching, what I realized was instead of sorting by the starting points, what would happen if we started sorted it by the end points? Because if we did that, what that kind of allows us to do is maximize the number of intervals that we could we could have in, in our in our list. So basically you can imagine that if we sorted it by the ending point, 
uh, whatever's left in terms of the range is going to be maximized, right? So whenever we pop off, we want to pop off the minimum number that possible. So if we put everything with the end at, at, at the end, um, if we sorted it this way, then our algorithm actually does the same thing, but it guarantees that it will pop off the minimum number of intervals. So to do that, we just need to sort it using a lambda function. We'll just say key equals lambda x, x1, like this, like this. And this, let me just make sure this example works. So there we go. It's, it seems to have worked. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And there we go, accepted. So this was really interesting to me, the fact that if you sorted it by the ending point, this would actually um, kind of magically maximize the, the number of inter intervals that we, we want to keep, and thereby minimizing the number of intervals that we want to pop off. So I think one day I'll go deeper into this. I just don't really have the time today, so I'm not going to be able to. But hopefully that gives you an idea of why this algorithm works. And, and, and yeah, so thank you very much for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.